Why does Chinese culture keep getting rebranded as a different Asian culture on the internet? Let's delve into the reasons why. Yeah, they just took the Monkey King and then they turned it into the massively popular Dragon Ball Z. What's going on? We got to talk about it, Andrew. Let's just run some clips from this brand new YouTube video saying the rebranding of Chinese culture. Did you know that this, this, and also this actually isn't Chinese? At least that's what the people on TikTok are saying. You've probably already heard about the conversation about Chinese things being rebranded as other nations things, especially Japanese and Korean. A very big thing was the Douyin makeup. When that became trendy, people were rebranding it as Japanese makeup or Korean makeup. One kiss is all it takes. The same thing has happened with the brand Flower Nose. People assume that it's Japanese because it looks cute. So it must be Japanese. The famous Northern Chinese snack Tanghulu, which is traditionally supposed to be a hawthorn covered in sugar. And mm. today you cover all kinds of fruit with it. But all of these things have been rebranded a little bit, or at least people are saying that it's not Chinese and then people are having to correct people. And I think the wildest thing is, it's even gone as far as people posting, this is why Korea is great. And they're posting mm. pictures of Chinese women with their literal Xiao Kung Shu ID name in the picture. It's so crazy. Mm. The traditional clothes that Japan and Korea has today came from China originally. And of course, Korea and Japan both adapted it to their lifestyle. But that's why they'll, they'll always look a little bit similar because they have a, a natural historical tie with each other. Hmm. I think it's because Westerners know kimono and hanbok first. Yeah. So they assume that's the origin mm. of the culture, which is not. Like kimono used, like it's called wufu. It's from the wu area, this region. Yeah. Yeah. When you see things that are Asian and it says that it's Chinese, maybe instead of attacking it right away and saying that Chinese people are stealing and spreading this actually very xenophobic stereotype, maybe do a little bit of digging into the history behind things because a lot of things, one, are shared, but also, again, this is a mother culture in its own region. So it's very likely that it's either a shared thing or that it actually originated here. Boom! Hey, listen, I just got one more video. This is talking about the prominence of Tang Hulu being sold as a street food in Seoul. Is this becoming an actual problem in Korea? Or are people just overreacting? Within this year in Korea, the popularity of Tang Hulu skyrocketed. Comparing January to July, the number of people who searched Tang Hulu on the food delivery app in Korea increased 47.3%. Tanghuru is a traditional northern Chinese snack and it's simply fruit that's sugar-coated. Tanghuru has been around in Korea for decades, but while the popularity did go down at one point, possibly because of ASMR channels now, the popularity of Tanghuru is just simply incomparable. Health officials have voiced their concerns over this super high in sugar treat. It's also becoming a waste problem. The sugar is attracting a lot of bugs as well. It's also causing a lot of people to break their teeth. Do you guys think Tanguru is gonna be a quick come and go thing or is it here to stay? Oh man, this is a classic topic. It's very interesting to see Andrew, other people address it. We made a video two years ago that uh, got 120,000 views. And basically Andrew, a lot of people constantly wonder this issue in some form or another over the past decade or so. Yeah, and I think that especially with the birth of social media and not just the birth of it, but just how much information is going around. I always mention the misinformation about a lot of other things on the internet and one of them being Chinese stuff because a lot of people have a lot of different feelings about something being Chinese, you know? So we wanna go through the reasons why. We're gonna break it down. You guys let us know in the comments down below. We're also gonna go through some of the popular comments on some of these videos and posts. So yeah, let's get into it, guys. Point number one, China is not considered cool or sexy or good looking, so people just do not want to give them the credit in their mind. Yeah, I mean, as we talk about, we've mentioned before on this channel that China it's a big place. It's a big country and the government does a lot of things and a lot of Chinese people do a lot of things. So there's a good and bad, but essentially 
China is not considered cool. There's a lot of videos and articles about this actually written by like very smart people wondering and trying to break down why China isn't considered cool. And there's a number of reasons for that, but we're not going to get into it because that's a different video. Uh, I think it also has to do with the proliferation of Asian culture. So let's say, for example, Andrew, nobody in the world knew, knew what Tonghulu was, right? It's been around Tianjin for like, let's just say 100 years. South Korea's had it for 10 years, right? But then South Korea, they have the, the, they have the ears of the world. Mm. So when the ears of the world hear it, like your average like basic person they hear it as a Korean thing. So even if they go get the history later, they just can't accept that Tanghulu came from like the evil place, even though it went to the place that they love. Yeah, and it's so easy to brand something as something else if there's just a viral TikTok that says, oh, this new treat from Korea is, is, is a candied berries and candied oranges on a stick and it's called Tanghulu and it's Korean. Then everybody who's un, who doesn't know about that already uh, considers it uh, Korean. But I will say this, I feel like there is some sexy Chinese stuff, but it's it's kind of like, there's not a lot like, you what, know, what, like, what, 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 like, please tell us red, you know, like red lanterns, red cheap house, women in cheap house. Those are sexy. Those are sexier right, than the You're Hanbok. talking about a lot of Shanghai 1930s yes. bund imagery that, uh, the stuff in everything, everywhere, all at once when they're having the retro, retro Wong Kar Wai scene. There are some sexy stuff about Chinese culture, but not as much. Anyways. Right, right. Point number two. There are, is too much emphasis on the bad sides of China that it outweighs the good side. But to be fair, maybe depending on your perception and where your news source pools that you're like sipping from are, there's a lot of bad ammo. I mean, if you think about it, everybody from around the world is consuming these TikToks about Tonghulu, for example. Now, this is just one snack. Like, this is really not the biggest deal, but it is important that it is not like something that is originally from China and came to Korea like hundreds of years ago and morphed into something else. It is literally just ported over directly. It's not like ramen, okay? Ramen, you know, Japanese ramen. Like, I will say this, the concept of ramen is from China. La mian, right? Noodle soup, that's Chinese. We, uh, Japanese there, will say it themselves. Yeah, Japanese all know that it came from China, right. but, but they morphed it, they morphed but, it. Tonkatsu, tonkatsu, like the, the pork broth and like the way it's done now, it, it's essentially, you know, they made it their own. You know, interestingly enough, the inventor of instant noodles was Taiwanese, Japanese, Momofuku Ando, yeah. actually still was Chinese in a way. Yeah. I mean, listen, they call it cha shu. But anyways, what I'm saying is that there's just so much bad stuff coming out of China, whether it's the splandemic, it's the, it's the geopolitics, it's the... The spying software, internet, it's the decamps or whatever. I, like, there's just so much bad oh, stuff that is going to overpower any sort of good stuff because hate is stronger than love, David. Hate, you know this. Well, Andrew, you are basically going against every sort of blue pill Disney movie ever no, by saying no, that, by the way. Hate on the internet, negativity on the internet will always overshadow the positive. I will say this. Hate is certainly more explosive than love. I don't yeah. care what movies tell you. Um... Point number three, uh, people have an emotional response to Chinese and it's usually bad. David, what's a recent story that you can tell? This is just recent. Oh my God. Okay. So I, I call an Uber and the guy's Nepalese, right? So yeah. I see his name and I immediately just said, oh yeah, are you Tibetan? And he's like, very, very similar. I'm, I'm Nepalese. And then I was like, oh yeah. And then he starts talking about the food. He's like, you know, all the food in the, the Himalayas is similar, similar. And I was like, oh yeah. I mean, you know, because I had just had some Tibetan food recently, but it was from a region of Tibet that is close to Sichuan, so it's tasted kind of like Sichuan food. So I was like, wait, wait, Tibetan food is similar to Chinese food? And he said, no, 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 that no, no Tibetan and Nepalese, no Chinese, no Chinese. So he basically flipped out. Yeah, 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 and this is not the first time that if you ask a question, if something is Chinese or are you part Chinese or is this thing inspired <laughs> by China, you know, People don't want to give Chinese things credit. And I'm not saying that they need to be like, oh, yes, and thank you to the Chinese for giving me this. No, no, no. But I do think you got to acknowledge that the emotional response is a little strong. 
it it's was, a little too strong. It probably reminded me of what brown daisy people felt like it was saying they were they were Muslim after 9-11. Right. And feeling like people's like visceral, I don't know, some sort of you, shoulder roll. Or you something. know what it is, in my opinion? I think it's the idea people, a lot of people, and maybe particularly they're like not the most uh, global or educated people, but they're always like, they jump to this conclusion that like, if I give Chinese credit, then China's going to take over. And especially if you are, to be honest, like a smaller country in Asia, like a Vietnam or, an, or uh, well, Vietnam's actually kind of a big, small country. But then like Nepal or, or obviously Tibet is like China. Yeah, China could, I guess, in theory, take over. You know well, what I mean? I'm sure that that's what they're... They, that's a thought in their mind. Yeah, it's a worry, you know, like, you know, uh, even though maybe but, it is or is not going to happen. But, but see, I think I'm, for me, I was able to continue the conversation and not be thrown off by that. But maybe other Chinese Americans who are not used to being this educated or having that thick of skin, they might have been like, oh, oh, I feel like demonized. Right, right. So point number four. For even the good sides or the cool things that exist in China, the Chinese themselves may not know how to market it or push it out to the world. Yeah. Because, Andrew, they had Tang Wulu for 100 years in northern China, but it took South Korean influencers to make it pop globally on the internet. Well, maybe the South Koreans, they just found the beauty in it, you know? Like, maybe the Chinese, they didn't know how good a Tang Hulu could be. Like, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. They, they had were picking dirty fruits over there. <laughs> Her fruits in Hongdae is more cleaner. So what we do is we take the Chinese idea, but we take the Korean fruit, and then we make a Tang Hulu. And it's way better. It's way better. Like, no, it's possible. Like, I, that's a joke. But like, yeah, I mean, I do think Chinese are not good at marketing. Let's just be honest. That's not a marketing. It's not a strength in Chinese. It might be people. an understatement, Andrew. They might be really bad at it. Yeah, Chinese, like, they call it like, yeah, check out this, a fruit stick. And then Koreans are like, no, but like, it sounds better if we say Tong Hu Lu. So we just say Tong Hu Lu. And it's a Tong Hu Lu you know. Well, it's almost like Tang Hulu is just Mandarin, but the people who actually speak Mandarin might have just called it fruit stick. When they yeah. met. It's almost like because they just didn't even understand what from their language sounds cool to Western ears. I, I mean, guess. I like, know this all the time, David. We, you know, I feel like we've been making videos for like so long and then people still sometimes ask us if we're Korean while we're like doing Chinatown videos. Our last name is Fung. We talk like, I'm not saying we don't talk about other cultures, but like, I feel like it's logical that we're Chinese. Right. But everybody still doubts it because they're like, I don't know. These guys are like, I think they're kind of cool. So they can't be Chinese. <laughs> and I think even like, it's crazy that sometimes Chinese even think that yeah. about themselves, to be honest. Exactly. And, uh, I don't know, guys. Listen, there's a, a bunch of other things we're going to get into. Point number five, Andrew. Is it because China periodically forgot a lot of its ancient culture? Because it's like a complex whiteboard that is constantly wiped out by 60 to 70% every new dynasty. Whereas Japan and Korea, they almost exported like one of the really good whiteboards that somebody drew, which is like a dynasty. Whereas China kept wiping its own board. So it doesn't even know what was Chinese anymore. Right. Well, and then also like the Cultural Revolution might have taken out a lot of the kind of ornamental, I guess, like, you know, Chinese culture. So I think, yeah, I think that is kind of partially true that China. It's has, like you export the Han food and the Han dynasty or the Song dynasty or the kimono styles at some, one of the dynasties from way back. And then there's like way other, you know, Mongolian Manchurian dynasties that come in that influence, you know what I mean? They just wipe everything. Have you ever hit the refresh page on a browser and then the page turned into something that you didn't want it to be? <laughs> Chinese culture is super complicated, guys. It's just like, it's I don't even know, man. It just changed so much so many times. Um, point number six. Maybe the good aspects of Chinese culture are just too technical for most basic people to grasp. Mm, like what, for example? For example, let's just say, for example, in the video, they said that China's like the Rome, what Rome was to Europe, China was to East Asia or even Southeast Asia to a lesser extent. Like, what does that even mean? Do people care about Rome in 2024? Maybe older people do who are in history, but people just care about what you have done for me lately. 
Yeah. When it comes to basic things, you know, like not everybody thinks like a historian. Right. Well, like one of your basic things like food or, or just fun culture activities in general. Well, who cares where ramen came from? I'm saying like in a way, if, no, if you're it, a basic person, no, that, that's who, a le- who cares? It doesn't matter. No, that, that is a legit question. Like, right. why do we need to still argue about where ramen originated from? Where even though bonsai it's like, trees originally come from. Well, the best ones are in Japan. I mean, that's probably without a doubt. You know what it is? It's that it might have originally, obviously a lot of stuff originally came from China, but China, it's about who does it the best, right? Kind of. That's essentially in modern day, who does it the best? And if Japanese do their ramen the best and they do bonsai trees the best and they do uh, even the artwork and the the tapestry the the best. The Vietnamese got the best fried egg roll right now. Would you agree? Right. I wouldn't say Vietnamese invented the egg, the spring roll, but yeah, I mean, they, they got the best one. I'm just saying. You they guys, mastered let me it. Know. But you they, know, history and matters because, you know, we still have to get the credit. I can see that perspective too. Yeah, but oh, man, do you expect an average person to always give credit to like 500 years ago? Right. Do pe- I years guess ago? do people give... Uh, credit to like the Roman alphabet or Roman Roman numerals. Or Do like Americans numerals? even want to give credit to the British all the time? It's like <laughs> almost everything comes from them. America's really, really inspired by England, but people do not like to think about it. Point number seven, China is so diverse, we ourselves might not be even aware of what was created outside of our own ancestors' provincial area. Like, a lot of Cantos probably never even had Tong Hulu before, right? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I didn't even know bonsai trees were Chinese until I watched that video. I mean, it makes sense because I think if you look at ancient gardens from, like, a different dynasty, they all, all the East Asian ones look the same because they're based off the Chinese garden you know but i didn't know because i we were just using bonsai is a japanese word right so we're using the japanese word right and they just got the most fire looking gardens if they got the coolest looking gardens then if, yeah but yeah it's true that in a way yeah china does no but where but at the same time it doesn't matter uh, from a marketing standpoint how come chinese where are all the great chinese gardens and how come they didn't upkeep them well there's so, still there's like still i would say I of East Asia, Chinese gardens rank number two. Japan but, ranks number but one. But if China had great gardens and then tore them down at some point, and then Japan's gardens just kept getting better and better, then Japan, do they get some credit for upkeeping the gardens? Yeah, but I guess people want to parse out the credit to give the cre- the historical credit to the maintenance to the innovation credit, but... Most people do not have enough brain space right? It's for complex. that nuance and the, yeah. for that level of detail. Let's go through uh, some comments. Let's get into the comment section, Andrew. Do you think it's this? Andrew, China supporters are saying, y'all, we're just lagging behind the economics. Don't worry, the soft power is coming. Other people are saying, no, you guys will never have it because the CCP makes you guys uncool. And then is there a whole other aspect where China maybe just being such a large civilization, was it ever as cool? I'm not saying it didn't originate a lot of stuff, but was it ever as cool, whatever cool means? It's a lot easier for a smaller place to be considered good or cool. And the reason is because as a smaller country, and even Joe, Japan is actually a big, small country. It's pretty big still. But essentially, like, let's say South Korea, which is a small, tiny country compared to China. It's like all their good is going to get highlighted and then their bad is not that bad because even if they do bad things, it can't really affect the rest of the world anyways. Yeah, it's just the volume is not there. Yeah, so the good media spreads further and any negative impacts, it's easier to hide because it's small. But since China is so big, every impact that China has is huge. And right now, most of the impact that you see is going to be framed as negative and or is negative. Right, right. And also, I do think like a lot of the heavy, heavy benefit is almost more like in the third world too. maybe first world feels like I don't know. I just know the first world doesn't really count the cheap goods on Amazon and et cetera as a benefit, even though it is a benefit. I just know they don't care. You know, they just don't count it. Um, Somebody was saying, you know, I went to all you can eat hot pot 
uh, with my buddies and one of them called it Korean food because they also have Korean barbecue there, but we all went for the hot pot. I told him we're actually going to do Chinese hot pot. And he went on to basically say, uh, no, no, we're not. A lot of cultures do it. I- I'm not getting Chinese hot pot. Maybe you are. Basically his friend was so against getting anything Chinese. Dang. I wonder what race his friend was. Yeah. Uh, of course. Generally, I, guys, by the way, the hot pot that most people eat is the Chinese style. It is. It is. It's inspired. Now, there might be a Korean flavor broth that you can get. And I'm not saying style. that uh, Shabu isn't like higher class in a way, but it doesn't taste as good. Yeah. You, what, you're just going to dip, dip all the meat in yuzu panzu? Um, I'll say this. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the bonsais. Obviously, the Korean flag is driven from a lot of Taoist things from the Shang Tsung dynasty. A lot of people are talking about tea. Andrew, the word tea was uh, brought by European traders who met a bunch of people that were Hokkien. In Hokkien, tea is te. Mm. So, other word, other dialects, it's cha. Obviously, cha, te, tea. Uh, ketchup. Ketchup was gets up. Mm-hmm. Canto Hokkien sounds, you know, it was some sort of fish paste that was brought by Chinese to Vietnam. The Europeans met the Chinese in Vietnam. That's how it came about. Um, a lot of people were just saying that in Japan, people talk about the history a lot of it being driven from China, but in Korea, they don't as much. I just think different cultures process it differently. I think Korea, Japan is really confident in its ability to make something better. So they don't mind acknowledging the original roots of like mm. Castilla cake being from Portugal like, and things like that. Uh, it does not matter where it comes from, but the Japanese version is a better. Yeah, I feel like that's how Japanese people think about a lot of things. Mm. Um, somebody said it's because China doesn't export entertainment. It just exports everything else. Mm. China has its own cultural sphere that is almost incomprehensible to a Western audience. Inscrutable. Somebody said, why does China need to be cool? Cool is from the West. For example, we have, not, we have to focus on material life force before there is more room for cultural reciprocity. It is not a fair comparison. You know why being cool is important? Because being cool makes the individual life better. It makes your life better when you're cool or sexy. Well, well, or it doesn't it impact the way the people will treat you on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, it does a little bit. And that's why being cool... Or, be, or having matter. your group being viewed as cool, right? Yeah, that's why being having your group be branded as cool does help right. your life a little bit. But of course, it does matter what, I guess, uh, slices of the population you're having heavy daily exposure to. Because some people do not know the difference between Asians mm-hmm. at all, right? Last but not least, Andrew, somebody said it's the Chinese tonal language that is not as good sounding or not as cool. And of course, you know, this was an argument back and forth. Ultimately, I'll say this, man. I think... After a lot of heavy research that is unbiased, I do think a lot of stuff in East Asia and to a lesser extent, Southeast Asia may have some roots in ancient China, but I'll tell you this, I don't think it means anything. But to a lot of people on the internet, for some reason, after this debate on either side, it means a lot. Because just because you originated something doesn't mean that you kept maintaining it or innovating it, or or I guess it doesn't mean that the people who have, you know, people who have taken it and making their own, what does it mean? Right. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know, is that a very moderate perspective, Andrew? What's your perspective on this? What do you think about Tang Hulu just being the last example of something that had to be, come from China, but then it was never going to pop if it would just stay Chinese and it's filtered through Japan or Korea? Man, I think Chinese just got to get the marketing up, man. If you got the things, you got all the stuff, like you got... You made the stuff. A lot, the of the, a lot of the stuff originated from someone in China a long time ago. So that's good. But you got to get your marketing up. So this is just a lesson. To me, this is just a message to be like, hey, Chinese, just so you know, some of your stuff will get rebranded unless you push forward and tell people and make it cool. So this is a message to Chinese people to help. Make things cool. Chinese people got to be cool. I mean, listen, guys, cool power works like any other power. Like whoever has more power in the cool metric, I'm not talking about macroeconomic GDP, whatever metric. I'm talking about the cool metric just got more power. So they just going to just get all the trappings that come with more power. I mean, China didn't invent the EV, but they're about to dominate that space globally for the next like 100 years. Or but whatever. they're not cool. They're not cool EVs. Huh? Are they? 
Some of them. I'd say the top right, 10% yeah. are some pretty of, Some of them look cool. All right, anyways, guys, you let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about all this. A um, lot to take in, you know. Yeah, too bad that people, you know, it's complicated. As we say, the word Chinese will have a, may provoke an emotional response from some people for uh, some years to come. So, anyways, let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace.